we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Soccer Through the Decades. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Tonight we have the 1970s Bucknell Soccer, and we're excited with the group we have. Great town on the call. A lot of history from the men's program that we'll get to in just a brief moment. I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for this. The Geisinger medical folks have done a great job on the front lines throughout the pandemic, and they do a great job, as always, with our student athletes in our community in and around the Bucknell area. Tonight, joining head coach Brendan Nash, we've got five alums, and what a great group we have. I'll start out with our first alum from the class of 1972. That's Larry Greenwood. Larry was the team captain in 1971. He was an all-Middle Atlantic Conference first selected in 1970 and 1971. Our second alum from the class of 1975 is Bruce Strasburg. Bruce was the team captain in 1974. He recorded the third best single season in school history with 37 points in 1973. He currently ranks third on both the career points and goals scored list with 88 and 38 respectively. He was all Middle Atlantic Conference in 1973. He was also the all Middle Atlantic Conference most valuable player in 1973. He was an all ECC selection in 1974 as Bucknell made the transition from one conference to the next. And he won the Christy Mathewson Award as a senior. Bruce was inducted into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame in 1998. Our next guest from the class of 1976 is Lee Schwartz. Lee lettered in 1973, 1974, and 1975 for the Bison. Joining us next is Gary Tubman from 1976. Gary was the team captain in 1975. He was an all East Coast Conference selection in both 1974 and 1975. He won the Albert E. Humphreys Award as a senior in 1976. He was inducted into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame in 2004. And our final alum on the call tonight is Peter Christian from the class of 1981. Peter was a team captain in 1979 and 1980. He lettered all four years while at Bucknell and was an all ECC selection in both 1979 and 1980. Brendan, some great talent. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Let's have a blast. Yeah, I, 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 it, it's tough. I like because um, these guys know how much they mean to me. And um, when I look at the different names on the board, they they connected us, and and it's been so important for Bucknell men's soccer. You guys had great success. All you guys had great success. But we're going to talk about different questions so you can educate the other people that are out there so i'm going to start with you peter and tell me about your recruiting recruiting was different back in 19 yes 76 whatever <laughs> um you know well first thanks for having me i'm a little disappointed uh i think i played 50 plus games and you didn't mention the one goal i had so <laughs> that right out there on my resume right? it wasn't a very pretty goal but i'll take it who was it against pitt Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, my, I knew Bucknell very well. Uh, long family history. My mom went there. My dad went there. My aunt went there. Two cousins went there. So it was always on my radar screen. I played with a good club outside of Philadelphia. Um, I knew I wanted to play Division One. My high school was a feeder program for a city school, and I really wanted to go to Bucknell. I don't know how I got on Coach's radar screen or, or, uh, or he got on my radar screen, but we, we connected. Uh, he invited me to come up to his soccer camp, and I was excited to do that so he could see me, because back in those days, you didn't have film, you didn't have social media, uh, you really had communication between coaches, and my coach was all about Temple. I mean, that's, that's what he was. So I um, went up, and I made an impression. Uh, he then recruited me pretty strongly, uh, ended up going, very excited. It was everything I wanted, right? So it's Beautiful school, D1 program, obviously coming off a tremendous successful run with everybody on, on the call here knows well. Um, the distance was great from Philly, that's three-hour distance. 
and it gave me everything I wanted, and I could not have been happy. It was such a great experience. Uh, it was everything I hoped for. I would like a little more in the win column, uh, but it didn't take away from the overall experience. Uh, during it, did you, um, like, was it email? Was it um, An email. calls? What did you do? <laughs> it was letters. Um, I, and I really don't know who touched base first. I think I may have, and it would have been a letter. And I believe I got a letter back. And then I got a phone call about coming up to camp. So I'm sure you was checking me out. I mean, there's back in those days, I can't imagine how difficult it was to, to you know, to get, uh, you know, info on, on different players all over the country. So uh, I'm sure it was all letter. And then we, you know, when I got up there, obviously we met, we formed a relationship and, you know, and the rest is history. Nice. James, how'd you end up at Bucknell? Is there a word called serendipity? I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, there is a word. Yeah, okay. Um, I would say that it was more a um, result of the lacrosse coach, and it was of uh, Craig Reynolds. Craig was a mild-mannered gentleman, and uh, at least it was my experience that he didn't really um, – uh, expend a lot of energy recruiting, at least me. Um, Connecticut back in the early 70s was a hotbed of soccer. We had UConn with Joe Maroney. So we were able to be on the radar of a lot of coaches. Um, but Craig was mild-mannered, and uh, I sent out letters to lots of coaches at lots of schools for lots of different sports. And uh, I don't remember if Craig responded or not, but the lacrosse coach was very interested. When we went on tour in April um, before um, in 75, you know, Bucknell had that uh, um, uh, seduction almost uh, with its uh, Georgian architecture. And uh, I felt that um, I could be a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a big fish in a small pond, but uh, um, I turned down other universities that uh, may have been uh, more of a, uh, you know, competitive stretch in terms of uh, having top 10 in the nation rankings. So I didn't know much about Bucknell soccer, except that uh, Craig was a good guy and uh, serendipity is a word that I'll stick by, gentlemen. Thank you. Bruce. <clears throat> so, so for me, back then they didn't have, and if they had them, I didn't know what they were. They didn't have travel soccer clubs or anything like that. I played three sports. I had grown up in Philly my whole life. My junior year in high school, I went down to DC. And I think what made me a really good player was I played on a high school team that had all uh, diplomats kids. And the only open positions were right full back and left wing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was not going to be a, I wasn't going to be a fullback. <clears throat> anyway, my point to this is that uh, that's why I learned how to use my left foot. But separately, <laughs> I, I was going to go to school at Wake Forest. And my dad decided to move back to Philly. And I had visited Wake Forest. I'd gone down there and I saw the campus and everything. And then come back senior year, I'm in Philly. My dad was getting an honorary doctorate at Lycoming, and he said, let's go by Bucknell. I'm a senior, let's go by Bucknell, and the chapel at Bucknell is exactly the same one as the one at Wake Forest. <laughs> so oh. literally, we drove around the campus, we came back in, we went into admissions, and I want, knew I wanted to play soccer, um, and so they put me in touch with Craig Reynolds, and while I wasn't recruited, once I caught up to coach, he did pursue me and encouraged me to come. I applied early decision, and, um, and that was it. One of the best players we've ever had was not recruited. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're talking about Lee, right? You're talking about Lee Schwartz. Yes, I, I meant Lee. I meant Lee. Okay, I mean, I, I want to set the record straight. Well, and actually, you could say that because if you, if you say Scott was good, 
uh, Scott was recruited by us once I'd gotten to Bucknell. So that therefore, <laughs> that, that might still apply. Uh, Cody is now on a call. Larry, why don't you tell us about your story? Um, well, I wasn't recruited. And it doesn't I, sound like any of you guys were recruited. <laughs> I, I wasn't have recruited. That back well, then. I, I didn't play yeah, right. soccer until 11th grade. <laughs> and I was in a new school and I ended up playing soccer in 12th grade. And I came to Bucknell and I figured, love this sport. You know, I'm going to go out. And I think the fact that I'm the oldest one here probably means that uh, my year as was maybe the last year that freshmen could not play for the varsity. Ooh. And I think Bruce came the next year. Is that right, Bruce? And you could play for the varsity. Yeah, I, could, we could, I think that's right. I think that is right. Yeah. So I came as a freshman, and there were three or four guys my year that I think were focused on and recruited by Coach. But uh, everybody else was maybe recruited. I'm not sure. But basically, that freshman year was in my tryout. We scrimmaged the varsity you know, three times a week or something for 30 minutes or whatever or, you know, something. And it was great playing against these guys. And so at the end of the freshman season, at the end of the season, it was a question of were any of the freshmen going to be asked back for the summer camp before school started? And basically the whole varsity starting team was coming back the next year. And so there were three of us that got invited back, got invited to come to the summer camp. And I was one of the three. I don't know if I'm remembering this right, but um, there weren't too many freshmen. Uh, and We're not questioning it. That was asked back. So, and, and so I, I ended up being uh, a starter on that team as a sophomore and was chosen to play center back until the uh, three days or four days before our opening game with Pitt and coach moved me up to left wing. So <laughs> that, that was my recruiting experience. <laughs> Well, you guys just played different positions back then, I guess. Okay. Lee, tell me about your recruiting. Well, first of all, I never played left wing. And <laughs> also, Todd, um, I noticed that my resume was a little light compared to the others. If you had asked me, I could have given you a few more uh, pieces of information, but uh, we can correct that for the record. I was actually, re ironically, I was recruited for baseball, puck now. Uh, Tommy Thompson recruited me. And back then, you could play. Uh, you could play multiple sports with difficulty, but it wasn't uh, prohibitive. So I went, when I was at Bucknell, uh, on a visit with Tommy Thompson, I asked if I could meet the soccer coach. I met the soccer coach, and you know, fall season came first. I went out for soccer, and we actually had, uh, uh, piggybacking on what Larry said, we had a JV team, and I think that really helped in the coherence that we would later have because – a lot of the guys in our year played together and then we went up and, you know, played the varsity and we might not have been the, the, the superstars because they were all playing, you know, they were up in the varsity of freshman year, but we ended up being, I think our junior year, five out of the 11 guys were from that class and we'd all played together JV year and it was a real strong bonding experience. So I, th I think that was, that was an interesting twist on uh, freshman eligibility. All right. Well, Lee, we're going to stay with you. Tell us how you matured during your four years, whether as a player or as a person. Well, I, yeah, I, I, had I, want a huge, hear, I want to hear this. I had a huge upside. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> I'm going to focus on Remember how matured as a player. Remember this student on the call. <laughs> I had a huge upside because, uh, like Larry, I never played soccer as a kid growing up. I played football and uh, actually – Went out for goalie my my sophomore year in high school because I have a football physical with bad knees and then I played and I fell in love with the game and I played it every day for the next you know five or six years, so uh, I really uh, I really felt that that JV experience helped because I was growing and learning so much. I was 17 years old when I got to Bucknell. I was still I had a lot of physical uh, growing to do as well, and I think uh, just just being part of a of a real close knit of of guys made me made me not want to let anybody down, and I mm. think that was the the biggest drive I had to succeed, not to let my teammates down, uh, and to you know and to be the best player I could in, in whatever position I could end up end up playing. So I moved around a bit in terms of positions. I ended up settling in at 
at right back, but I had a I had a big upside. Uh, let's put it that way. <laughs> so, uh, tubes. <laughs> but to help Cody out, how did you become such a great connector, Lee? Like the Buckdown um, Network, like you're the best at it. So how did you develop that? Because Cody wants to be a connector. You know, I don't I don't think there's a there's no uh, template for this. You know, there's no blueprint roadmap. It's hard work. I think I think that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, we all ended up. Everybody plays with their guys. You know, they've got three, four years of having the best friendships in the world, and everybody thinks it's going to last forever. But you know, things happen. People get jobs. People have families, and it's a lot of work. So I think it's not how I became a connector. It's it's the fact that I wanted to work at it so much because it was it was so special to me. Uh, maybe not being married for a long time, not having kids, obviously, um, you know, gave me the ability. Yeah. I left Buck, I left Lewisburg. I ended up in Manhattan for 10 years. There were a lot of people who were living in the New York area as well. So geographically, it was a good, uh, good locus. But uh, Cody, it's hard work, but it's well worth it. And actually, I, I would add that I think from our years of what I'll call the mid-70s up to Chio and Peter and, and all that kind of stuff, the reality is Lee has kept us all together better than anybody. He's been absolutely phenomenal at connecting the dots. It doesn't matter what the class has been. We were close, and we can cover this in some of the other discussion, but Lee has been phenomenal at making sure you know, there's an event to go to, reaching out. And, and that's what I would say, Cody, it's the reaching out. And it, and it doesn't have to be hard. It, it's hard work. But if it's in your personality, which I think it is with Lee, um, it absolutely can be can be done. And it's a matter of just keeping people in touch with each other. And if they make it, they make it if not, but just not losing track of people. Uh, Larry, you want to chime in on what you learned during your four years? <laughs> well, I really like what Bruce just said about Lee. I mean, that's a wonderful statement, Bruce Lee. Uh, that's a wonderful thing that you must have going for you. Um, for me, you know, it, like I say, it was different. I came to school as a freshman and uh, didn't really feel like I had the skills. I didn't feel like I had... I had a lot of desire. I had a lot of the, the, the good stuff like speed and stamina. Mm -hmm. I was a good header when I, when I showed up already. I don't know why, but, uh, but you know, I, like I said, you know, I was basically a defender and I was basically a center defender. And then coach moved me up to left wing a couple of games before the game before in the sophomore season. And I, I really didn't know what I was doing, but, <laughs> but the seniors, you know, there were nine seniors that were starting. There was one junior and there was me. And the seniors, you know, they, they were just, you know, they were picking on me. They were giving, they were teasing me a lot. I they, they said, what are you so nervous about? I said, I have no clue what, what to do with a ball at midfield. You know, I, I've never done that. And they just took such good care of me. And by the end of that season, right, I was, I was just running up and down the field, playing probably a lot more defense than offense. But the, the, being able to play offense with these guys, they were just really good. And so they just talked to me all game long. If I had possession of the ball, I just listened and they told me what to do with it. And it, it worked out well. So a good teammate, yeah. Yeah, it was great. So, you know, junior and senior year, you know, we lost uh, a good number. From, the, from my class, there were probably three or four that were still playing senior year. And I'm not sure if any of them were starting by senior year except maybe me. I'm not sure. They were some other good players, but I think the Vietnam War era or whatever, they didn't they didn't come back for sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So so I just developed. I just kept learning and learning. I ended up going back to play center back, which after playing left wing, I sort of felt like I I, I enjoyed being on the other half of the field. <laughs> so time and space. <laughs> Tubes, why don't you answer that one? How'd you develop? You know, I'm going to take a different spin on it as I usually do. <laughs> and that is, let's uh, remember back then that soccer was a, a minor sport in America. As Lee had mentioned, football, basketball, and baseball were the big three. 
soccer was an afterthought. And, you know, we played it because it was new, it was different, and it was international. So it was a really cool way to learn about foreign countries because a lot of foreigners did play, um, as Bruce had uh, alluded to. So my first hook was in late August of 72 when Craig Reynolds had a, you know, a preseason meeting and he had a reel-to-reel film of the 1966 World Cup. I'm sure you remember that, right, Bruce? Uh, I do. That was, I, I do. I was it was England that. versus Germany, okay. and it was the only time England's won the World Cup. And he must have shown it two or three times. And, you know, for somebody that's 18 years old, it made quite an impression of how, you know, uh, meaningful it was to a nation like Britain, you know, how hard the players, you know, worked to try and achieve uh, um, glory for their country. So that was the initial hook. Um, Then when he had in some of his drills something called the Kramer Circle, which he had brought from, you know, maybe uh, books he had gotten from a German trainer. I mean, this was all new to us. Uh, Additionally, Uh, There was very few places that we wouldn't travel to to either play or watch a soccer game. And this uh, includes Bruce and Lee and myself. We traveled to Philadelphia. Robbie Kurz, who was a class of 77, had some games in northern Jersey that we would travel to. So uh, I remember going to watch the World Cup because they didn't televise it in those days. It was on closed circuit, uh, circuit TV in a theater. I went to Newark, New Jersey to watch it with um, our teammate, Bill Saparito. So to your point, Brendan, we had to do a lot of self-discovery. And I think that was part of the, the pure joy of it, was that we did it ourselves. And uh, it was our own love of the game that mushroomed. And then with the teammates that we had, um, there was a synergy that was unstoppable. So that's how it explained yeah, it. Yeah, and Sappo, I, like all you guys, tubes, like how you guys created that, I have no idea. And like, and I wish we can create that moving forward because like just the synergy, as you said, it, it, it's, it was incredible listen, listening to the stories. And that's why you guys were great back then. It, it's the it wasn't because of our skill. You're pretty right, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, but it, it's because you cared about each other so much. Like, you guys were so tight. And um, I, I don't know how to – any coach wants to do that. Peter, what do you think? Well, just as a side comment, uh, Gary, I watched the 66 World Cup replay two days ago. (laughs) If you go to YouTube, (laughs) really? Yeah, if you go to YouTube FIFA, it was the 54th anniversary. Wow. They played it leading up to it to see the fans. And then they showed the game and they showed halftime and they showed post game. And it was, if you get a chance to do it, it was, it's so entertaining. Is it black and white or in color? Say again. Black and white or color? Well, it was originally done in black and white, so they show in a black and white, and then they do replays in color. Wow. Tubes, I got to clarify your memory of the 66 World Cup. Um, All I recall is we had three a days, and we used to watch that film at night, and I'd look around the room, and everybody was sleeping by the time the game was (laughs) until the overtime. I I took notes because I thought we were going to get tested on it, you know? know. You were doing (laughs) it. The difference between Lee and Tubes. That's why you're a doctor. We knew how it ended. (laughs) <laughs> the, the, the amazing thing is people walked up and bought a ticket. They could actually buy a ticket. Really? Uh, for the final, which is pretty unbelievable. That they're is. All, they're, they're all dressed in their finest. N- not the people on the ends, but you know, midfield. They're all in coat and tie. Really, it's a great watch if you get a chance to do it. Okay. Well, so t- take us through, like, what you learned during so, your career. You know, when I, when I got to school, I didn't know what to expect. I, I knew that high school ball was completely different than college ball. <laughs> and I had no idea what to expect. And then I get the letter from, from Coach Reynolds saying, run eight miles a day and do 500 burpees and do, you know. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And so I did 12 miles a day. And I did, you know, so I came on campus and <laughs> the best shape I've ever been in. And I just didn't know what to expect. Uh, and um, 
And it's different. It's completely different. And when I talk to high school kids that are going to play college, that's what I tell them. So I was fortunate. Uh, I was started my career. Uh, I started it right back, Bruce, because right wing wasn't available. So um, <laughs> it, it was, it was uh, uh, and I played with three seniors. So it's this little, you know, 17-year-old freshman playing with these three seniors. Coming off the 76 year, was you know, tremendous year. Yeah. And I just, I remember just saying to myself, don't make mistakes. Let them yell at you, you know, and, and uh, I certainly didn't expect to have that. And that was a great, I mean, that was, it was great to be thrown in the line like that. I'm sorry. My phone. Sorry about that. Hold on. Um, so, and then, you know, went into sophomore year and then, you know, junior year and senior year, you know, you, you kind of, you pick up, I was captain those years, you pick up that, look, Players aren't, you know, they're look, looking to you for leadership, right? And, and so I, I, you know, I took that to heart and Craig Reynolds put a lot of faith in me, a lot of confidence. And, uh, and, I, and I did that. And so if I look how I played freshman year to senior year, it was night and day. And I would like to think that the players I played with thought the same. I was a big believer in you just as hard as you play as, as game day. And, and so, you know, being from Philly, you know, it's the opposite on Iverson, right? But it is, I'm a big, a big believer in that. I like to think that I pass that on to my, my, uh, my teammates. All right, so Cody's up next, and he's a Philly guy, and I think he's going to yep. appreciate the fact that you just made an Allen Iverson comment. <laughs> so, Cody, why don't you hit the guys up, and then you pick who answers. Okay. Um... So what advice would you give me or any other players that are in the program today about the college experience, the college soccer experience at Bucknell? So just scroll through Cody and just pick different people. Um, Mr. Strasburg. Okay. You can call me Bruce, but. Uh... <laughs> no, he's not allowed to. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Um, you respectful. Well, the, the college experience for soccer, I mean, for me at Bucknell was pretty much everything. It, it involved beyond, and I think one of the reasons when you speak to what we've done, it was really all of us embracing each other in a million different ways. We all happened, I think almost, we were all in Kappa Sig. So we were able to, when we were partying, which we did only a little bit back then, not as much as you guys now, maybe, but, um, you know, we, we'd always talk about soccer. We'd get to know each other. we talk about situations. Well, wait, Earl, when you're going over here, why'd you go over there last game? I mean, we literally, th that's what we did, and that's what we talked about. And um, I think the other thing about the experience, and it speaks maybe to really what we learned, we really worked hard in practice as much as anything. And it's going to sound like I'm, a, I'm falling all over Lee and, Lee and Tubes, although Tubes was playing for the varsity. We had back then what they called the a big gray machine. And it was Lee, uh, Gary Van Wagner, a couple other guys, and, and Sapo. And their goal, they were not starting, but their goal was to kick our ass every single day of the week That's and awesome. make it tough for us. And that was their goal. And I honestly think as much as anything – the big gray machine, and they were called that widely? Well, we wore uh, gray shirts in practice every day. Right, we wore gray shirts, so it was very creative. We were college students, that was a very creative name. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I won, by the way, I won the Silver Splinter Award um, at the end of the year. Right, well, we can go, through, we can go through that later. You missed the most points of anybody, but that, well, we can go through that later. But I think it, there, was, there was a real camaraderie and a desire and the guys that weren't starting at the time, if they were freshmen or sophomores, wanted to start. And they measured themselves against us on a Wednesday when we didn't have a game till Saturday. And I think as much as anything, so working hard, practicing hard. And then I think, you know, we, we're friends for life. I mean, whatever age we are right now, it's been 40 years at this point, And we're still able to pick up the phone and see each other. And I think coach with what you've done on having that soccer uh, golf alumni thing in April, which we obviously couldn't do this year, 
that's a great way of bringing the different classes together so people can hear the different stories and things like that. So I'm not sure if that answered the question, but that's what I, what I said. <laughs> There's no right answers right now, Bruce. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. good, go good. Ahead. Do you have about networking and finding the right job after Bucknell? No, 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 no. Sorry, Cody. Keep going to the rest of the guys. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll take it over. Peter, go. Um, yeah, you know, from, from Cody, your, your perspective, you know, this is, I'm going to say the cliche things, right? Enjoy every minute. I mean, you know, find the right balance between soccer and, and friends and, and, and school. But, you know, this, this, this may be the last time you play as part of a team at such a high level. You'll, you'll always be part of a team, either your club soccer team or your work team. But uh, this is a special time. So, uh, you know, take advantage of it. Enjoy it. Uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll have some fond memories. Larry. You know, I'm thinking back. It was 50 years ago I play, was playing soccer at Bucknell, but I'm going to tell you, it's all pretty much the same, right? The camaraderie, the camaraderie is big, and you keep that with you for the rest of your life. And what you learn about a mental work ethic and a physical work ethic, um, if you're on a good team with camaraderie, it stays with you forever. And... Uh, and just to repeat what was just said, I don't know who, Lee, you said that. I think, or Peter, the school itself is just a great backdrop for it. But this, the soccer experience is just based on those things, the camaraderie and the work ethic and the team ethic. Oops. Hey, Cody, how are you today? Well, how are you? Uh, great, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, you and your... Um, talented uh, teammates have been playing soccer for a long time and there's been a lot of um, pressure on you to be successful and to show well and I don't envy your group one bit because as much as you've had success there's also been a lot of you know expectations put on your shoulders and you know, um, we weren't under the microscope the way that you and a lot of college athletes are today. So um, my, my advice to you is to, as best you can, break the shackles of the, you know, upbringing because, you know, how many games did you play in, premier, club, whatever it was. I mean, you guys played a lot of games. You were playing all the time. It was – I think in our best year, what we were 12, one and one or something like that. So we played 14 games and that was going into November, but you might have weekend games and you might have tournaments and uh, you know, you really amass a lot of soccer. So try and keep it fresh. Okay. Try and listen to uh, uh, the great uh, sage advice from coach Nash because he's been around the game a long time. He knows you guys really well. And I think he's a tremendous source of, you know, making sure you stay focused and sane and healthy at the same time. And then finally, I think what we all found during COVID is that um, you're there at a university for the academics. I mean, they took away the spring sports, you know, you're lost, you know, what the hell, how can they do that? I mean, it's, it's uh, unconscionable, but at the end of the day, you know, try and take great classes with great professors and uh, the liberal arts foundation that Bucknell stresses, even though they have a lot of professional tracks to follow is very unique. You're at a great school and we found that out almost by accident. So uh, enjoy the ride, Cody. All right, so, so back to me, because we're, we're running out of time because we're talking so much. <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, uh, No, no, Lee said midnight. I, I'm following that uh, to the T. Well, Lee has vodka in front of him, so that doesn't count. Um, but we're trying to help Cody out here. 
most memorable experience on a soccer field. Right, Todd? It's soccer, not just it's the most memorable soccer experience you had. And I'm going to go with Peter first. Wow. Um, I, well, both are on the field. One is during a game, was one off a game. Uh, the most memorable on the field was a freshman. And I was lined up against uh, Penn State's All-American uh, 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 star, Richie Reese. And he had a coach next to him. Randy. I know Richie Reese. Yeah. So he, he's, he's down here in Philly. He's so quick as shit. He is unbelievable. So, and he, he had a forwards coach, Randy Garber, who's from my area. And, he's, and I play with Randy since. Yeah, you got a lot of Philly guys. So. We, we played against Randy Garber. Yeah, you did. Penn State, yeah. You probably played against Richie Reese too. They were yeah. yeah. I, I owed Richie. Oh, we Reese. did. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and so I'm a freshman playing against this guy, and and I think he nutmegged me three times. <laughs> That's <And> all. <laughs> to your most memorable. Yeah. How is that was, memorable? He was shutting Richie Reese down. He didn't do anything. I, my, I had a single goal. I'll never forget that. With with you know this All American coming out me, this guy who I respect to no end, Randy Garber, and that is my most. That's my most memorable. Now, real quick, another field. We're playing Pitt at Pitt. Right. 1979, we get out there Friday night. Out of the tunnel come the Pittsburgh Steelers in full pads. Because the Pirates were in the baseball game, in the World Series. And so we literally kicked the ball. So Harris, uh, uh, me, Joe Green, Jack Lambert. I mean, that is a memory you don't forget. Mm -hmm. 79 Pirates, they won it. They did. And so did the Steelers. Yeah. Tubes, yours. All of a sudden, you're not Philly guys. <laughs> no, I bought. Hold on, you know, Lee. We'll talk about it later. Most memorable soccer moment. Just soccer. I would probably say that um, our game up at Jeffrey Field against Penn State in NCAA. You know, uh, first round um, classic where um, I think we scored a, I think Scott Strasburg scored a late first half goal. The assist was by Doug Byron. Um, may he rest in blessed memory. And uh, the onslaught of uh, Penn State's fury in the second half was furious and um when you talk about bond of warriors between the backs starting with goalie ted peterson and with lee on the right uh back with uh, don mcnell on the left with bruce liner and the stopper in those days they called it me at the sweeper we by the grace of god uh them in the goal post prevented them from scoring a goal and we won one nothing and I might add, Peter, uh, Chris Barr, who kicked for the Cincinnati Bengals, who was a four-time All-American, took a, a free kick that went off my chest, and I had the imprint of the soccer ball for a week. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> Back to you, Brendan. Um, Lee or Bruce, you want to follow that one up? <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what. Penn State was clearly memorable. There was no question about it. And what I would say is this being a center forward, it is the only game in the second half I came back to play D. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's memorable. I, I mean, I think – I know you, you're looking for one scenario. I mean, I can think of a bunch of different goals or things like that. I honestly think one was uh, being able to play with my brother um, as part of the team and everything. And then that really translates to where I think with Scott being two years younger than me, uh, Lee and Tubes being between us, I think it sort of did a nice bridge of what I'll call about four to five years in that time frame or something. And so I think from a, a memorable one, I think it just the total scenario, I would say that. And then I throw one other thing in that what I really loved about playing and our field was where the field house is now um, and literally to be out there on a weeknight scrimmaging playing soccer with the autumn leaves going and the bells going off in the chapel was just you, you felt like you could run all day long 
So I think that that is something I clearly would remember. Um, and that is part of soccer. So therefore that, that counts. Me? I'm not hearing you, Brendan. Well, uh, it's either you or Larry. All right. What do you got? I'll go. So I have a very clear, indelible memory from my Bucknell years on the soccer field. And it's actually losing to Philadelphia Textile in the second round of the NCAA tournament my junior year. I had never lost a soccer game at Bucknell. We had played the entire season without losing. Uh, we gave up three goals to that point in, in uh, 12, 13 games. Uh, we didn't give up any goals against Textile. It went into overtime. And in the second overtime, Dale Russell, who was their All-American leading scorer, put in a blistering shot into the upper corner. And I was probably the closest defender to him, although it was about 25 yards out. <laughs> and and I've never I've never forgotten that that moment to me we lost I remember Bruce consoled me in the locker room afterwards because I was absolutely distraught uh, I just thought it would go on winning forever so as great as as great as I enjoyed Bucknell and had fabulous memories I have to say honestly that in my mind I can't get that that out of my head I want to have an addendum to that Dale Russell was the leading scorer in the country and Coach uh, um, Reynolds had advised us to switch our formation so we had somebody tail Dale Russell the entire game and our defense had a, a huddle and said, no, we'll take him on as is. So um, just a little bit of a, uh, additional history to Dale Russell from Bermuda. He was on the national team in Bermuda. It didn't work very well, did it? Well, for 70 minutes it did. <laughs> 100 minutes. Oh. Oh, and double. actually, on that same team was that guy Newsom, who was their sweeper, and he was all over my butt that game. And he was on the Bermuda, Bermuda national team as well. I'm from Bermuda, played defense. <laughs> his tree, his thighs were like tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna move to Cody. Cody, ask uh, the question that about teammates. Uh, who is your team? Who's the teammate you admired the most throughout your career, and why? Uh, I guess we could just start with Bruce again. Yikes! Um, so I was thinking about this question, and I actually think it, I'm not going to name one person. I think each year is always different. I'm going to say Larry, because coming in freshman year, he was the senior captain. It was, I think, the first year. If it wasn't the first year, it was the second year freshman. You were allowed to play. And I do remember you, Larry, in terms of making me feel a part of it. So I think that that was a really big deal. I think that another person I would say that I think was important to us really becoming everything was Steve Sparks. Sparky um, was captain uh, so the, the year before me. And I think he, he, you know, he was a Kappa Sig. And I think he was also very incremental in bringing us all together. And then I think my final shout out would be to the big gray machine because I think they, wow. they, they made us all absolutely a hundred percent better. Not even a question. Keep going, Cody. Uh, next. Let's go to Larry. Larry, let Larry go next. Um, yeah, it's a tough, Tough one. Um, played with so many guys. Uh, the best teammate or the, the somebody I admired the most. I admired probably everybody. I think that my that, sophomore that's year. That's kind of the point. It's a tough question. That's why I <laughs> <not> watch you. <laughs> that's why you're a professor there, Brendan. Well done. <laughs> Call him out. Yeah. You know, when you I can't sugarcoat this. So like, you can't sugarcoat it. Just go for it. When I was uh, when I was a sophomore, I think these guys that I played with that were seniors. Uh, this one guy, Dave Rath, was a was a great player. He wasn't the captain. They had three captains that year, and Dave was maybe the best. He carried the team offensively, but uh, he was a guy that his. Uh, Hold on, Dave Rath was not the captain. 
No. No. Brad, was, like the, one of the best players in Bucknell. Absolutely. Was not the captain. He was not the captain, but he, that team, they were wonderful people. And I think it, they sort of helped me understand that everybody on the team is somebody to admire. And you, you, that's, I came away from that that year, you know, and as an individual, yeah, he was, uh, he, he had a love of life. He had a smile. He carried a lot of the offensive pressure, uh, but he was a gentleman and he never wanted to lose. And, you know, what, what's better than that? But the fact is the whole team was that way. These, these guys were that way. And it, it sort of just always made me feel like, yeah, whoever you're playing with, you got to love them and admire them. I think I got that from this guy, Raf. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're up. So, Cody, um, <clears throat> getting back to my fondness for international soccer, and uh, back then it wasn't easy to come by. Uh, my um, soccer player from uh, Bucknell that I probably admire the most was someone named Don McDonnell. McDonnell was uh, the son of an army person. So he actually came to Bucknell sight unseen. He probably wasn't recruited. His brother happened to be going to Bucknell, and his brother was an ROTC. You know what ROTC is, Cody? Yes. Okay. So um, Don McDonnell was probably 5'7". Uh, he was the coach's nightmare. Um, he wouldn't run hard, wouldn't listen, but his background growing up in Argentina made him so knowledgeable, and he uh, had a passion for the sport that I probably hadn't seen before. He also taught our group to be a little bit of a renegade group because he taught us a different part of the game that Craig Reynolds, Coach Reynolds, did not teach us. Um, back then, Cody, it was more of a kick and run style. And uh, John McNeil brought from Argentina the, the, the short passes, building from the back. Um, and uh, he was also a tremendous beer pong player. So who wouldn't like that? So thank you for asking. Stop talking about we want long ball. We need long ball. <laughs> That's how we win games at Bucknell. I guess I'm up, right? Sure. I'm the last way up. So I, I agree with everybody else. There, there are so many players you played with, so many I respect, so many skilled players. Uh, if Mark Shewitz was on the call like he's supposed to be, I would have said Mark. Uh, <laughs> so Jim, Jim Kingman, Dave Benson, Bruce Marcy. I, the best player I played with is in the Hall of Fame. He came when I was a junior, and that's Mark Brotherton. And Mark was, if you ever had a chance to see him play, just – Never. Uh, both on the – you know, on, on both sides of the field. Uh, he reminded me of Scott, um, who also had a big influence on me. Scott came back and coached my spot. So um, he had a huge influence on my game. And I was lucky enough to play with Scott for many years against and for in uh, some, some uh, you know, interleague games post-college. Post but, but Mark was definitely one. He was a special player. Just a special guy. Yeah, I, I, I... – I've heard legendary stories, Fab Mark probably. Legendary stories. Some of them are drinking. <laughs> but, okay. That's right. You know, whatever. <laughs> I know, Mark. I think I haven't gone yet. So um, I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball here uh, because the obvious choice is Bruce Strasberg. Um, he was the best player I played with. He was my pop in the fraternity. Uh, he took me under his wing the first year there, even though I wasn't, um, I didn't make the varsity. But that's an easy answer. Like Brendan said, um, easy answers uh, aren't what we're looking for. But one person's name who wasn't, who hasn't been mentioned tonight, who I think made a huge difference in our, pro dif difference in our program was Ted Peterson. Yeah. Our goal. Yeah. He was the consummate winner he, I think he started uh, halfway through his freshman year and made a huge difference with his, uh, with his leadership, with his 
his vocal nature. Uh, he actually was given a yellow card once for cursing on the field at me. Uh, he's arguing with the ref. Uh, he didn't like the fact that I was going up. He wanted me to come back, so he used a few select words that the ref didn't like. He said, but it's my own player. He says, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't be using that language. Uh, but he also, he also made, a, he made me afraid to make a mistake. He, he told me once, he said, if it's in the 18, whatever you do, don't ever use your left foot. Said, I'll save it. He goes, you can shoot it on goal, but don't use your left foot. And I think, and I think that was also part of Craig Reynolds's coaching style. Craig, you know, he didn't as it, as it's come out, he wasn't a real tactician, but but he made us afraid to he made us afraid not to be fit. He made us afraid not to make a mistake. And like I mentioned before, we didn't want to make a mistake because we didn't want to let down our teammates. And I think uh, Teddy really uh, really instilled that in us. He was a f- tremendous uh, presence on the field. Uh, he helped out the offense tremendously because of his back then, you know, he had a drop kick that would go three quarters of the field that, that nobody in uh, soccer in this country had. He knew how to win. So, Lee, you, you'd appreciate this. Playing soccer. We, so we played soccer on Sunday and almost the goalie. Yeah, and you know, Christian. And I started stepping to go somewhere. And he goes, Nasty, drop. And I go, no, I got to go pressure the ball. And he goes, nasty drop. So afterwards, when we're having beers afterwards, and he goes, I'm the goalie. And I'm like, all right, you're right. <laughs> because I always have to tell you where to go. Like, like, don't go where you want to go. Go where the goalie wants you to go. And I'm like, okay, got it. I, I totally get it. Yeah, well, Tim, so Tim, Tim, Tim would only have to ask you that once. I don't think he ever made a mistake in goal the entire time. Um, we were playing with him. I don't think he made one mistake. If you have a goalie who never makes a mistake and you have guys like Bruce and Scott up front and tubes in the back, you know, not making a mistake ever is, is a pretty good, pretty good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I want to piggyback on that. Uh, I, I was going to sort of add that, but the big gray machine, I sort of stopped at the fact that you had Teddy back there and you had the diamond back with Lee and tubes and, and, and uh, liner uh, it literally, and Mac, uh, the reality was we knew they weren't going to score on us. And the reality was we needed awesome. to just score. Mm. They weren't going to score. Go get Lee, a goal. I think, I think he's, I think Teddy's still got the record on either least goals or a percentage of least, what, whatever that goalie metric is, which there's no way I'm going to know what that is. But, but, but basically, uh, I think they made us do what we were able to do up front and I can still remember taking those kicks three-quarter field off my head hitting him to the corner to Scott or Betteridge on the right on the other side you had the ball Bruce yeah that's why I talk the way I talk sometimes <laughs> I didn't know about concussions <laughs> <laughs> none of us did <laughs> did we get everybody on that one Todd I think so Got time for one more, Brennan. Well, guys, anything, any questions for you, from you guys? You know, I just want to say something real quick. Um, I think it's rather extraordinary that it's been 50 plus years. Jeez. Peter. Soccer comes. Um, 45. That's 45. Is that what it is? 45? 45. Yeah, I wasn't a math major. Or 50. <laughs> oh, Larry. <laughs> Let's just go with the long time. Talking about me, huh? Do it with a long time. It, it, it speaks volumes of the program. It speaks volumes of the of the school. I mean, that, that's that's special. I think, you know, consistency is so important. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, Peter I, and uh, we we did this yesterday with the guys from the '60s, who I I never coached you guys, but I didn't coach those guys, and then, so they were telling us stories, and I and I said to Todd, we have the best alumni relationship at Bucknell and Todd's a football guy and it's probably going to upset him but he has to admit the fact that Bucknell men's soccer has the best alumni relationship at Bucknell there's no yeah. comparison yeah yeah like yeah coach what you guys, say what you guys do you. for us what do you guys do for us I like I, I, I can't even express how much you do for us and Lee I know you're the 
and I, I know you're a point guy, but it just means so much to us. And for Cody to be here, and Cody understands it because Cody's been trying to get internships and interviews through Bucknell. And I'm like, that's what we are. That like that's who we are. So, guys, I, it's incredible what you guys do. Thank you. Right, right back at you, Brendan. You've uh, carried the torch. You've had uh, just some phenomenal teams. Uh, we're just uh, delighted for your program, and it's a blast to follow you. And we, you know, feel your pain this coming fall, but we'll do anything we can to uh, continue your successes. Well, the one thing is, I'm going to say we're 2020 Patriot League champions, right, Cody? <laughs> Nobody can say we're not. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Go celebrate. Yeah, First, go celebrate. Every, from Tubes. I mean, you've carried on. Uh, Craig Reynolds had a long tenure with everything, and there were certainly good years, and there were maybe not so good years, but the reality for you to be able to do that, every time I've been up there watching the camaraderie that you've had with the players you have coached, as well as us, but the players you've coached, they all appear to love you. And uh, I guess the ones that don't, don't come back. But, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, but no, but seriously, seriously, they all, they all uh, really seem to warm to you and, and the camaraderie, you know, we do it once a year at that thing and it'd be great to do it more or whatever, but um, it certainly looks great. And you've carried on a great tradition from that standpoint. And for the record, um, Brendan, I know you've had lots of opportunities, uh, opportunities to move elsewhere. And I know you're so committed to Bucknell uh, that that's where you want to make your home. And I think uh, the university should realize that and appreciate what they've gotten you. Absolutely. You're here. You know, I was going to add one thing, and I, I, I think I should say it, is that the current state of the program and how it's grown, and I think it's amazing that you guys have, you know, you can promise somebody every four years, within your four-year period, you go to Europe, right? Talking to you, Cody, right now. Talking to you. Yeah, so you guys, you guys to do that. I'd like you to appreciate that because let me tell you the highlight for us. It was being given $4 for dinner at McDonald's on a trip back from Gettysburg. So, oh, yeah. So a pre remember that, Larry? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we got. I can still remember Coach Coach handing oh, out four dollar bills. The McDonald's was a lot back then, though. Oh well, we, you know that we were splurging. We won, I guess. <laughs> so I, I I think you ought to absolutely appreciate what that gives to you, because uh, I don't think we had anything like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, well said, but and what you guys have provided to Cody. And, and Cody, that's why he's on the squall, because you guys are the best. You guys are the best, and he's the guy that needs to understand, and he appreciates what you guys do. Like, Cody is the best at appreciating what the alumni do, and he's going to be the next Lee Schwartz. And, and Lee, I hope you understand what that means by me saying somebody's going to be the next Lee Schwartz, because – You've been the best guy in Bucknell soccer to me as a head coach. Well, I appreciate that. I've had a lot of help. And Cody, so, don't so, be so, don't be bashful in in asking asking for help from your network. You know, uh, you got to be. I know sometimes it's uncomfortable, but reach out, ask people, ask them time and again. You know, sometimes we don't know, you know who we know until the right time comes along. But, uh, you know, tell that to all your teammates. There's a network out there, and they need to be a little bit aggressive uh, and just use us. And, and, Cody, reach out to us as well. I think you can get our number through 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 Brendan or the alumni office or whatever, but yeah. feel free to reach out as well. As a matter of fact, we're hiring a Bucknell alum uh, on the real – I don't know if you know real, or doing real estate, but uh, we're hiring a Bucknell alum, and we've done that through the years – uh, and they all they've done, they're not soccer players. It's literally just networking through the network. But if you, you've got a whole trove of soccer players out there, find out who is in whatever industry you want to go into and reach out. And you'll, it's, it's, it'll be unbelievable how they'll, they'll help you. 
And if you come to the D.C. area, Murphy's Pub of Alexandria, the club <laughs> I play for is looking for players. Wow, well, wow. Well, well, yeah, he would help us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Todd, anything else? No, I just want to start out, first of all, Cody, I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, I know nothing anybody says can take away the hurt that you got right now, the fact that you're not going to be playing a season this fall. But we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope that maybe in the spring you guys will have a season and, and things are going to be a lot better at that point. I wish yeah. you both your senior year. And I think Coach Nash had you on a call for, the reason, for a good reason and at the risk of being repetitive is to see what the Bucknell Soccer Network is all about. And, and this group in particular are really the foundation of the program. And what they've done for Bucknell Soccer, not just on the field, but since they've left Bucknell, really can't be, it can't be matched anywhere. And yeah, I'm a Bucknell football guy, but there's no program that does it better than the Bucknell men's soccer program. And uh, to echo what some of the guys said earlier on the call, I think Peter mentioned consistency. To have Coach Nash and Coach Reynolds, the two coaches for the last, I don't know how many years of the program, to only have two coaches, two head coaches, is a remarkable statement. And our programs here at Bucknell that are strong and are good are ones that have that consistency. And men's soccer's had it. And Brendan's done a great job. And you guys all talked about the golf outing. And really, it amazes me every year how that golf outing sells out in about two weeks. And uh, I, I wish some of our other programs could take take that away from how you do it, Brendan, because you do a great job with it. And Cody, um, the Bucknell network as a whole is an amazing thing. The fact that you went to Bucknell and you're going to Bucknell is going to help you immeasurably. But as Lee and everybody else has mentioned here, use that Bucknell soccer network. I think really coach had you on this call so you can take that message back to your teammates. So I encourage you to do that. And then turning to the alums, guys, I really thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's great to hear the stories and and to see everybody's doing well. I appreciate your, your support of the program and, and your support of Coach Nash. And for those of you that watch at home tonight, thanks for joining us and go Bison.